Good morning, everyone. And uh, I wanted to talk about the concept of lended cost in SAP Business One. So how does the lended cost work? So we'll go to uh, some of the scenarios of defining the lended cost in SAP Business One. So we start the process and uh, we start with the purchase order. And we select a vendor and we select an item. We select another item. So let's say we have two items. <clears throat> and then we can also select, you know, what is the price and quantities. We have a, this is one item, this is another. This is the regular purchase order. So in this PO, nothing different actually. So we created a PO. Now after we create a PO, the next step uh, basically, so if you go back and uh, we open the purchase order. So this is the PO <clears throat> we just created. And then we create a receipt. Now this guru sheet is also the regular guru receipt. It copies my vendor, it copies both material, item number one, item number two, quantity and whatever the price, whatever we set up in uh, price list, that price comes up and then we add. And then we save. So here <clears throat> we have basically entered the guru sheet. So, so far, if I see the relationship map, what we did, we created a purchase order, purchase order number 731 on this date for this amount, 14,040. And then what we basically did, we created a GRPO, Guru Sinagas purchase order. And this is the same amount and same information which get copied. And the supplier and the vendor for this is a V110 ECME associate. So this is the, basically we created, and uh, now here, this is a GRP document for this vendor. Now we want to have after GRPO, and the one more thing which I want to see in the GRPO is, so if I go to GRPO, if I see the general entry, <clears throat> so my stock account has been debited, and my clearing account has been credited. So it's a regular posting and debit to the admit account. After that, we go to lended cost. So this is the lended cost. In the lended cost, I select the vendor. And then from the bottom, I select a guru seed against purchase order. So the lended cost document is created with reference to GRPO. So this is a GRPO we created today, 4008 on uh, February 15th. And this is the date we created, we select. And then what system does, it copies all both items which are there in a purchase order and also in GRPO. And from GRPO, it comes back to the my lended cost document. Now here we have a custom duty zero and uh, my allocation value, everything is zero. <clears throat> then here we have a cost. Now here we have an option of the broker. So who is the broker? So we can define broker also. Broker could be same vendor. Broker could be another vendor. If there is no broker, if you are absorbing the cost, then you can leave it blank cost. So choice number one, you leave it blank. Choice number two, vendor can also be your broker because vendor is the one who is paying it. Or you can have another company. So let's say I have this company forwarding company and that company is acting as a broker. Then I go to the different cost here. So here we have a um, quantity, demerits, insurance, stamping, 
shipping storage. So we have these six costs. Now, why six? Why not more or less? That is also defined. So here, if I go to configuration, so here in the administration, under setup, purchasing, there is a landed cost. And here in the landed cost, we can define, you know, these six costs. And there could be more than six also, less than six also. So these costs could be whatever we want to define. Now we allocate the value, how we want to allocate value. So do we want to allocate by quantity or do we allocate by the value? So we have a choice that how the cost of custom duty, cost of dim rays, cost of insurance, cost of stamping and cost of shipping and others is being allocated to the inventory. So you can do these are the choices which we have and we can define that also. So that is why if I go to landed cost document, so here we have a by quantity. If I want to change it and say, I want it uh, by value. I want to do it by value. You can change it also. And if whatever you have done in the configuration, that will default it. Because in the configuration, for these different uh, landed cost objects, we have a quantity, therefore the quantity was coming here. And how much of the value we can define. So we say, okay, this is 200, this is 100, this is 200, this is 100, this is 100, and this is whatever. Okay. So we have defined some value. So what we have said here is that the total uh, value here is $800. So we have 800, this could be 800, whatever. And then system, if you see on the right hand side, it calculates factor also. In the factor, it tells me that uh, what is the value, the total value, and what is the this value the, uh, with the portion of it. So if I want to go here in item, so now what system does? System does basically that I have a 533 being apportioned to this first item and 266.64 has been apportioned to the second item. So that is how this value has been apportioned in that ratio. And if I change this also, let's say I make it this to, uh, rather than 100, if I make it $200, then my total value here become 900. And then if you see here, there's, so we this allows 600 to this, and 300 to this. Now, why the 600? Because this value is twice of this value. So out of 900, which is the total cost of landed cost, 600 get assigned to line item one and 300 get assigned to line item two. So now the, this was 9,000. Now the total value become 9,600. This was the, the, the 300. Now this become 4,500 plus 300, 4,800, okay? And then if I want to see uh, my general entry preview, in the general entry system will say that my stock account is debited for $900. So I have my landed cost total value $900. So now the $900 is getting debited to my stock. And then I have a, these expense accounts, so freight accounts is this, this expense is this, these GL accounts are getting updated. Now this GL account, $900 is getting updated to these different accounts. Now one more thing, if you go back into the setting, in the setup, purchasing, landed cost, and here, different general ledgers you can define. So these are the different accounts and you, we have a choice like in which account we want to put what value. So custom duty go here, stamping goes here, shipping charge goes here, dim rates goes here, storage go here. So these are the different accounts to which these costs get assigned. And these accounts could be whatever, this is just an example. And, uh, and then we can add it, then we can add it. 
So now we have created a shipping cost document. If I want to see general entry, so now in the general entry, my stock account is debited for 900 and then freight expense in other expense account, which has I defined in the configuration, those accounts got credited and then cost get assigned to these accounts. I want to see, say, my uh, relationship map. I can see relationship map also. So this blended cost document get associated to this GRPO document. So that is how system keep track. And system also keep track that my vendor was Acme Associates and my forwarding company, my broker, was this V1003, which is my forwarding company. And uh, if I go to GRPO, and if I want to see the relationship map there, I can see the relationship map. So this was my purchase order. With this purchase order, I have a GRPO. With the GRPO, we had a landed cost. Now, after this, if you go to GRPO, and then we can also create AP invoice or vendor invoice. So if you go back here, and then system copies. This is my invoice for the Acme Associates. This is the vendor. This is the supplier. So this vendor, whatever the PO value was, get updated. Hit enter. Hit save. And then AP invoice has been created. Now, this was the invoice to the vendor. We can also do the invoicing for the broker also. Because he paid the expenses. He need to be paid as well. So I select my broker, forwarding company. And I say landed cost. So here in the bottom, there's a landed cost. I select this landed cost document. And hit enter. Hit enter. And then it copies all the different items. So these are the all item which was there. And this is my forwarding company, broker company, V110. And then we can enter text code. And then we can save this document. We can assign this document. And we save it. Date division. Okay. We can. Location missing. Okay, so location we enter. What location this is happening? So we enter the location and then we save it. So invoice get posted. After that, if I want to see the relationship map, then we can see that that the, this AP invoice was created for this landed cost for that amount. If I go to landed cost document, I can see the relationship map, which it will say that this was the landed cost document, which was created with reference to this GRPO. And this was the AP invoice for the custom amount. And if you go to GRPO, I can see the whole linking here as well. So that is how our landed cost document functionality works. Thank you very much.